Well, good morning. It is my first day off after working seven night shifts at the hospital. So I'm getting ready to head off to bed and get some rest. But in the meantime, while I'm up this morning, I wanted to go ahead and get dinner in the crock pot so that I don't have a full meal to cook this evening when I do get up. Uh, it's actually been a busy morning. I've already milked the cow, fed the rabbits and the puppies, and now I'm going to throw together a quick meal. So what I have here that we'll be putting in the crock pot are two whole rabbits. And these are some rabbits that my dad and I processed just a few weeks ago. We're going to get both of these in the crock pot and I want to show you how I freeze my rabbits. So I wrap the outside in pen full. And the inside is actually vacuum packed. So that's how I freeze my rabbits. I do two in a pack if I'm going to do whole rabbits as opposed to cutting them up. For our family, two in a pack works the best because we have a lot of hungry mouths to feed around here. So we're going to need some scissors to get into our vacuum pack. And these have been defrosting since yesterday afternoon in the refrigerator, so they're still a little bit frozen. And one of the things that I do with my rabbits to prepare them for cooking is I let the meat age in the refrigerator after they're processed for three days so that that rigor mortis, the stiffness in the animal, is gone. Uh, that tends to make the... Um, the meat kind of tough and chewy but if you let it just rest and kind of do a dry age on it in your refrigerator for three days really two to three days i found that three days gets it a little bit more tender with no sacrifice sacrifice in um, uh, quality of the meat so that's what i do three days so what we're going to do i have my crock pot ready i usually spray the bottom of my crock pot just because i don't want anything sticking or burning. Uh, these will release some water, but because I don't brine my rabbits, some people will soak their rabbits in a brine. Um, there's not as much water that lets out of them once they thaw, but a little bit will come out. And we're going to actually add a little bit of water to this because we don't want them to dry out during the cooking process. So they're in there. Now we're just ready to season this. So I made up my seasoning yesterday. This is a mixture of smoked paprika, garlic powder, onion powder, and dry mustard and salt. Um, about a tablespoon each of everything. Um, maybe a little bit less on the salt and a little bit less on the garlic. but pretty close to a tablespoon of each of those ingredients. And this is just gonna be kind of like a dry rub, um, but with us cooking in the crock pot, it's not gonna really finish off as a dry rub. So it's mainly just our seasoning. These rabbits are going to ultimately end up being pulled rabbit for rabbit sliders this evening. Let's see, we're gonna get them seasoned on both sides. So those are nice and covered with our seasoning powder. To this, we're going to add um, a cup of water and we're gonna cook it on low for six to eight hours. At about six hours, I'll make a determination if it needs to go longer um, versus if it's ready. But for now, this is ready to go. We'll check it in six hours. I'm keeping it on low and we want it falling off the bone. So once it reaches that point, we'll take it out of the crock pot, let it cool a little bit on a plate, and then we'll pick all the meat off of the bones. We'll put them back into any broth that's in there and make a barbecue sauce. And then those will go on little hamburger buns for sliders.
So here's what our rabbit looks like in the crock pot. I've added a cup of water to the bottom just to keep anything from drying out or burning. And most of the seasoning has stayed on the meat. So we're ready to cook. Okay, so it's afternoon. Our rabbit has been cooking for six hours in the slow cooker. Um, I checked it with a fork. It's tender and we're it's turned off now. I'm letting it cool down just a little bit so I can actually handle it. We'll get it uh, shredded off the bones in just a few minutes. In the meantime, I wanted to go ahead and get started making the sauce. So what I have here in this bowl is two cups of ketchup and our barbecue sauce will be a ketchup based sauce. To that, we're going to add a half a cup of brown sugar. You can do the mixing. Just don't slosh it. So he'll be getting that mixed in. We've got two thirds cup of apple cider vinegar. And once he gets the sugar mixed in with the ketchup, we'll add that. And then I'm going to start measuring out the dry ingredients. This is gonna be very similar to the rub that we put on the rabbit. So we've got a tablespoon of dry mustard powder. a tablespoon of onion powder, we're only going to use a teaspoon of garlic. This is a half a teaspoon, so we're going to do two of these. We don't want to overpower the sauce with garlic. We've got smoked paprika, again very similar to what we used in our rub, we are going to use two teaspoons of the paprika. Heard you making sliders. And we have company now. First day of school when she's home. How was it? I already knew everything they were talking about. It's all stirred down. So, uh, well, you can go ahead and ask, add the vinegar. So now, different from our rub, we're going to add a little bit of cumin to our sauce. We only want a half a teaspoon of the cumin. And we're also going to use some cayenne pepper. We're going to use a half a teaspoon of cayenne. If you don't like it spicy, you can omit the cayenne. So those are our dry ingredients, and I'm gonna go ahead and add this to our sauce mix, and you can keep mixing. Right. Now we're going to get our wet ingredients. We're gonna use trying to talk to us while we're making this. I'm going in the bath. This is a very unprofessional right. video. So we're using three tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. And I'm actually going to add a tablespoon of olive oil just because the rabbit is kind of a dry meat. And this will just kind of help bring all the flavors together. Is that why the sauce is very liquidy? Well, the sauce is very liquidy because it's a barbecue sauce. And then we're not using any salt in our sauce just because everything we're adding has salt. But for our salt flavor, we're going to use some Dale's, which is very salty. It adds a little bit of smoky flavor. Just one tablespoon of that. We're also going to use about a tablespoon of regular pre prepared mustard, and I'm just going to eyeball this. Stop stirring. Uh, you said you were going to come out, you were going to execute them, and take them back to your shop. All right, there you go. You can stir that in. So we've got everything but the liquid smoke. 
So we've got the liquid smoke and we're going to add a tablespoon of that. We'll add that in, get that stirred in, and that will be our, sa our sauce. We'll just taste it after you get it all mixed up to make oh. sure we don't feel like we need to add anything. So I can taste it? Well, let's get it stirred up. I think a whisk may work better for that. Yeah. All right, we're going to do this a little faster because we got some dry ingredients that are kind of clumping okay. together. So this is our sauce. I'm gonna let my helper taste test. Yay. Let's, let's get a little bit on a teaspoon. Taste our sauce, see how it tastes. Mm. So how does the sauce taste? It tastes amazing. Do you like rabbit? Mm-hmm. All right. You excited about dinner tonight? Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. I mean the rabbit. Okay, we're back. What I have done is deboned all of our rabbits. So we have a big bowl of nice white meat rabbit that was very tender and fell off the bones. It's just like taking chicken off a bone. Um, so we're going to get our sauce into this and we're going to get it back into the crock pot. So we have our sauce and we actually have the broth that the rabbit cooked in. I strained any of the big chunks out of it. So it's still got some seasoning in it so it's not a clear broth, um, but it's very rich. Now what we're going to do is add about a half a cup of this. Well, that's only about half of that. We're gonna add about a half a cup that to back to our rabbit get that mixed in and that'll just add some moisture back to our rabbit after it's taken out of the broth and deboned it dries out just a little bit this just adds a nice moisture back to it without a lot of broth in the bottom and we're going to be putting this back in our crock pot to stay warm so we don't want it to dry out now with our sauce we have probably have way more sauce than what we need for this amount of rabbit this will keep just fine in the refrigerator. Um, so we're, we're gonna start with about a cup of the sauce and um, see how it goes from there. And then we'll have extra sauce for dipping uh, the sandwiches in once we're ready to eat them. All right, so we'll start by adding our sauce. Can I stir it? You can. Oh, a lot of rabbit. I'm making a mess here. All right, so we've got a cup of the sauce in there. We'll see how this looks stirred up and decide from there whether or not we want to add any more to it. All right, so the sauce is mixed in. I think we probably need about a quarter cup more. I don't want this to dry out when it goes back into the crock pot to stay warm. So we'll put another quarter cup of our sauce, get that mixed in, and then this is going to go back to the crock pot to stay warm. So here is our final pulled rabbit. We got it mixed with the sauce and back into the crock pot on low for about 30 minutes. It's sticky and tastes delicious. So we're ready to put this on a bun and serve it with some battered potato logs that we made. So how's the rabbit? It's delicious. What do you think, Elizabeth? You're not eating it on a bun. Is it good? You like it, Evie? I haven't tried it yet. How's it taste? You gotta try the rabbit. That's pretty good. All right, that's a wrap. <laughs>